Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends. Wherever you are on the face of this very planet we call Earth, we welcome you. I welcome you. I use the word we because it is not just me. There are millions of people working very hard all over the world to ensure that this very effort we are making to restore Biafra comes to fruition in our time. The time now is approximately six minutes past 7 p.m. in the land of Biafra and the same number of minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you are. We are the only people emanating from Africa that is being listened to across the entire 24 time zones on this very planet. Millions listen to us right all over the world. If you have joined me on my Facebook page, you should be able to see me live. Those listening via radio, Biafra, you will hear my voice, but you cannot see me. The same thing applies to those who are listening via FM in the land of Biafra, those who are listening via satellite across the whole of Africa and Middle East, and those of you who are listening through radio, Biafra app, and indeed tune in Sweet Radio, Garden Radio, and Simple Radio. I welcome you, and as I do so, I will seriously encourage you to welcome all those who are around you, your friends, your family, your relatives, because tonight's program is going to be something slightly different. If before we finish, we have not heard that relationships are being terminated, that people are taking their own lives, then insofar as I don't want anyone to take their life, but this very evening is going to be remarkable because we have promised to preach this very gospel of truth, this very gospel of restoration, and that is what we are here to do, and that is what we are going to accomplish in our time. Those that came before us did not understand the meaning of consistency and resoluteness. That is what IPUB epitomizes. That is what we have come to represent. And that is why, regardless of the machinations of the enemy, regardless of what our detractors try to do, we are 
zeroing in on the ruins of Asorok and with it the inevitable precipitous collapse of the zoo. Elohim is in charge, of course. And before we go any further, we must worship him. But before we do so and give thanks to the Almighty in heaven, I must tell you that my name is Namde Kano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. I am the director of Radio Biafra, director of Biafra Television. And by the very special grace of Elohim, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra, we are under oath to speak the truth always, even if it leads to our death. We are also under oath to restore Biafra, or we die doing so. And as I keep saying, and with permission from heaven, I can confidently declare that should we fail to usher in Biafra this year, it is no longer God's fault. It is ours. That is why we must do everything we can, humanly possible, to ensure that Biafra is restored as quickly as possible, because the zoo is empty, absolutely empty. And today we have come to do justice to the mess that it has become. We must therefore hand over our proceedings to the Most High, and in so doing, invite the Spirit of Heaven to take charge of what we are doing here today, because it is pivotal. And we must pray, in the language of heaven, of course. Or Bula and Andy Moors in a watches a rock, Rikres of Bedding Gossi. Tawena Jagama, when I told you when I will see Alan Yagi. Or Bula in Dok and Yorua Buona, no. Bundanatum Boleto, when I seen it in Sochineke. Hasn't it in Sochineke? Hasn't it in Sochineke? Le Quaker who begs you a Sachia in a going cake. Nihi no bu nana ki boni keri hini hini nke madu dendu na huanya. Manko ona po ge huanya manu gonye kere gi. Obi yam nendi boji wene tuwe hana po waka ka. Obu nana ki boka ome. Ntu kwa so bi anyini ni bu mno bi anyini ni bu nebi non nanke bule dengozi. Nanyi wena aro yiki gula amara ge na omi ke hona jagi ne bule dengozi ke pritu wele tandege. Nihi no bu moru wika nye bu nanke bule dengozi. Anye wiki chose wetu gare. Anya nage faro si. Ayana <laughs> Cosi we are Jupiter, he is not going to be able to bring us in. He is not going to be able to bring us in. We need to go soon. 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 We need Koga buni pete masu mwe bie nyanyi bia fran nan kebre. Anye ga wisi ala wenye wei kozi yegi wei jage mama tohi. Stene bige marone bige bi. Ise, 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 mama de regi chineke. We must preach this very gospel. And as we do so, we must do it in truth and in every honesty. This very day we have come to do justice to the decaying, dying zoological republic. If you don't have your pen and paper, you are doing yourself a great deal of disservice. Go and get your pen and paper, and as I've always said, wherever Alamajri is Janja Wido, I book, you bring your slate and you bring your chalk. As we delve 
into the depth of analyses and philosophical postulates, I would expect you to be mastering your alphabets from A to Z. Because had a majority of those in the northern part of the zoo been sensible, had our Yoruba brethren in the West been slightly brave with the grace that God has given them with media, we won't be where we are today. But the zoo is a mess. Anybody who is unfortunate to be part of the zoo is now a laughing stock all over the world. Mankind is laughing at us. And the sooner we bring the miserable existence of the zoo to an end, the better for everybody. The better for everybody. And that's why we're here this evening. You must pay attention, very close attention. It is ex very, very critical that you pay attention. I will take off my glasses and I will have a sip of water before we proceed. We are living through an era of Fulani infamy. Never in the history of governance. The last time what is happening now in the zoo ever occurred in the annals of history was in Spain, in the Dark Ages. I did not say the age of... I said in the Dark Ages. There's a man called El Cid. The Spanish were fighting the Arabs, the Moors. He was a great warrior. He led Spain into battle. He won famous victories over the Arabians, over the Moors. Some of you don't know that the reason why Italians have black hair is basically the Latinos, which is Portugal, Spain, and Italy. The reason why they have black hair is because they are a mixture of Europeans and Arabs. That's why they have black hair, unlike the Swedish, the Germans, and the rest of them. The Arabs were there for nearly 400 years. And when it was time to push the Arabs out, Spain raised the hero. His name is El Cid. The Arabs call him El Cid. E-L space C-I-D. That was a very famous movie by that name, starring Charleston Heston, if you know him. A very famous Hollywood actor. I recommend you go and watch it. That is exactly what the Fulanese are doing. Do you know what happened? El Cid died in battle. He had an arrow shot through his heart. He died. And when they brought him back to the castle, the wife said that he must rise and ride with the king the next day. He was dead. Why did it? Was because if the Arabs know that El Cid is coming to battle, they will become weakened and the Spanish can overrun them. In order to maintain that myth, El Cid that was dead was propped up on his horse, his armor put on him, and he rode into battle. A dead man on a horse riding into battle. So that when the Arabs saw his, flag, his banner and his armor, they fled. And the Spanish won the war because of the fear of a dead man. That is what the Fulanese are doing. I recommend after this program, you go and look for the movie and you watch it. El Cid. It was a Hollywood blockbuster in those days. We are living through an era of Fulani infamy. An era of shame and of disgrace. An era where a little boy, barely 30 years old, can be brought out in broad daylight, not hidden, they didn't even discuss it this time around to try and get a better mask to put on him. At least to try to convince, or should I say deceive, the gullible 200 million that Buhari is alive. They shamelessly brought out this boy, put him in front of a camera, and television stations, those who claim they are learned, those who claim they are educated, they all sat there watching the charade, watching this disgrace unfold before the whole world. None of them felt any shame, no trepidation, because people are now living through a culture of unprecedented impunity. They do anything they like and they can get away with it. 
And that is why what is happening is happening. And when I was actually going through the whole nonsense as it was playing out, it occurred to me rather very sadly that Africans and the black race in particular is a deficit on this very earth. I said this evening, I'm not going to compromise. I am going to tell you the truth. You may not like it, but I will preach it all the same. An 80-year-old man in broad daylight became a 30-year-old. Not even 40. 30 years old. Everybody saw it. And I know that what is giving some people comfort is that body double is not a new thing. It's been existing in history. In every political era, they've had body doubles. I understand. I respect that. But no body double ever addressed the people. No body double ever signed any treaty. No body double ever signed any undertaking or entered into an agreement on behalf of the country that is impersonating their president. In Africa, our education and our morals are highly flawed. This is a country supposedly of 200 million people. You have imams, you have pastors, you have bishops, you have archbishops, you have custodians of morality, you have those who are commentators, you have analysts, you have journalists, and you have the elders. All these people lay claim to one degree of relevance or the other based on what they perceive to be their place in that very society, be it age, be it by profession, be it by prowess, be it by pedigree, Call it whatever you like. In a country of 200 million people, a little boy was brought out shamelessly to represent somebody they claim that they voted for. I told you this before, that there is something wrong with an average Nigerian. Yorubas are very good. The Hausa people are very good. The Nupes, the Tevis, the Bachamas, just the Gwaris, everybody's very good. The Igbos, very good. On their own, they're very good. As soon as you bring them together, you see the worst in each and every ethnic group. It's like chemistry. There are some substances or elements that, in isolation, they're doing very well. In isolation, there's nothing wrong. Anytime you see any combustion in nature, Anytime you witness any volatility in nature, anytime there is a problem, even in nature, let's say with the preparation of, say, sulfuric acid, it is the mixture of more than one chemical. When they begin to react, on their own, they are all normal, very docile, nothing happens. But if you mix them together, things will begin to happen. There's something about Nigeria. Nigeria is a very terrible experiment that has gone wrong somewhere. And if you put all these people together in one cage, in one basket, you get the worst of each tribe. Every tribe becomes a ravenous creature. Every tribe loses its conscience. That is why the Fulani people can perpetrate this level of fraud. And nobody's talking. Because there is something fundamentally wrong with us as black people. And it is quite um, instructive that at a time when the whole world is campaigning to get rid of racism, when the whole world, in other words, is trying to take a leap forward in terms of respect for humanity and respectable human interaction, at such a very pivotal time in history, what are we witnessing in Nigeria? A return to the Dark Ages. A return to the Dark Ages. And who are the people responsible for this? The Fulani. The same people, this, the same people all the time. The same people all the time. They are responsible for this. What we are encountering right now is a despicable behavior that is beneath contempt itself. Beneath contempt. I am trying to build, as I always do, a foundation upon which I am going to rest this very broadcast today, that the world may know that we are actually very, whites are listening, 
The whole world is listening. They know how foolish we are. And I'm going to make them even realize it the more. I am going to make them realize it the more. And you'll be shocked this evening as to what you are about to hear. Those who are handling this whole fake Buhari saga, it was Abakiari. After I told you it was Abakiari. When he, when he died, our Yoruba friends now said they're saying he was a de facto president. When Abakiari died, I told you that Aisha had taken over. I told you. What happened? Aisha took over. I told that all Oshibanjo was missing. What happened? What, what is happening today? Have you heard from him live? It's all Photoshop after Photoshop. Deep fake video after deep fake video. They don't know how determined we are. Before I started campaigning that Osibajo was missing, I knew where he was. As I said, I can never ask you a question that I don't have the answer to. I knew where Osibajo was in that place called Banana Island. They will be shocked this evening. Osibanjo's aunt died in Ikeja. Osibanjo attended that when he ran away from Asorok, attended that very ceremony. So as they were issuing fake videos, Osibanjo was not in Asorok. He was in Lagos, living in Banana Republic. Oh, no, Banana Island, not Republic. Of course, it matters well be a Republic. Osibanjo attended the aunt's funeral. And I will tell them where that funeral, where the aunts used to live. Arowo Jobe, in Ikeja. After Mafuluku. Arowo Jobe. If you're traveling from Oshodi itself and you're going towards, um, what's the president called 9 11 or whatever it is, there is a junction you get to, Arowo Jobe, before you get to a place called Ogon Loko. I know that place very well. Inside the estate called Arojobe Estate, Osibajo was there. He came with a black Mercedes Maybach and two Hilux vans full of security personnel. After attending that very function, or should I say the the you know condoling with the family of his aunt, that somebody they took as, as their mother anyway, when his mother passed on. He went back to Banana Island, not in Asorok. Usibajo is not there. And do you know the reason why I've been saying that Usibajo is there and the Yorubas are not talking? It's because they know where he is. This is the type of country that you have. Where people approach every national discourse from a parochial viewpoint. You must defend your people. You must defend your interest. Is that how to build a country? Is that how to build a nation, I ask? Why must we live in an era when we feel comfortable lying to ourselves? Everybody knows that Nigeria is not working. Everybody knows that. We know that. You know that and I know that it's not working. But rather than confront that very problem the same way that whites are doing, whites are disgusted with racism and they're fighting back. And you can see it all over the world. Not just in the USA, I said all over the world, they're fighting back. Holding people who are racist accountable to the point that the great and almost immortal Winston Churchill, that he wanted to go and attack his statue, to tell you that evil is evil. I'm, I'm mentioning this because I want you robbers that hold Awolowo in high esteem to understand that they are doing themselves a great disservice. Awolowo was a very horrible man. He was a mass murderer. The same way we've just discovered now that Mahatma Gandhi also was a racist. I said, yes, Mahatma Gandhi of India was a racist. That is why a university in Accra is taking off his statue from their quadrangle. Are you following? That is how humanity functions. Once you are guilty of a heinous crime, every vestige of respect, dignity, and honor is stripped away from you. That is the sanction you get so that others coming behind you will not be as evil as you are. Awolowo and Gowon presided over the death of five million Biafrans. Five million. Nobody wants to talk about it. But we are talking about it. And we will continue to talk about it. 
African culture is on display all over the world as a disgrace and a blot on the conscience of humanity. What is going on in Abuja? Now, an abomination is happening inside Asurak as we speak. There are pastors, there are elders, there are imams, yet the truth cannot be spoken. The truth cannot be spoken. You go to church every blessed day. You have pastors. You pay your tithes and all the nonsense, all the biblical nonsense, all the rubbish from Quran. You have to be truthful. You have to be honorable. You have to be decent. In other words, in the whole of Nigeria, in the whole of Nigeria, those who are calling sinners to come and repent are worse than the sinners. Every pastor, I'm not a, every pastor in Nigeria is evil. You are there, you saw a, a 30 year old boy. They gave you a 30 year old boy as an 80 year old. You claim your elders. You claim you have gray hair. You claim you're knowledgeable. You claim you have PhD. You have all these things. You cannot see a 30-year-old boy and ask those in Asurag, why are you doing this? Why are you giving us this little boy? This is not Buhari. We know it's not. You have Yoruba pastors in Pentecostalism. You have a man. Those, they want to go to Hajj. They want to go to Mecca to go and pray to Allah. A bunch of, a nation of hypocrites. A country of hypocrites. Left, right, and center. Why can't people be honest with themselves, I ask? Because you're black. It's in your nature to be evil. You see, let me tell you something. When the white man painted Lucifer black, some of you thought it was racism, it wasn't racism. It wasn't. They are trying to, it's an allegory, let me put it that way, it's an allegory. They are trying to depict the state of consciousness of a black man. That's what they are trying to do, by depicting Lucifer as a black person. Now, you are in Nigeria, you are a Nigerian. And in that Nigeria, there is an understanding of the sanctity of the electoral process. People go to vote and they vote for somebody, albeit uh, you know, in a flawed election, and people are sworn into office to uphold the constitution. This is why I indict and I condemn all of them. The worst people you have in the zoo called Nigeria are the pastors. They are the worst of the worst. They are like serpents. They are the worst of the worst, all of them. If you're going to church, if you wake up and you go to church, you're going to hell, direct. Because the message you're receiving, they are from messengers of darkness, of liars and deceivers. Are you telling me that a devil cannot see that little boy? Are you telling me that even the man that I respect so much, T.B. Joshua, are you telling me that that little boy there is Buhari? Those of you that, are, that went to church, I was uh, clapping and jumping up and down. Jumping up and down and clapping inside deceit. Inside fraud. You are inside fraud. And you are jumping up and you are clapping. You are inside fraud. And you want God to bless you. You want God to hear your prayers. When the truth is in front of you, I told you what was happening from day one. But to tell you how terrible the zoo is, because it is an evil man saying it. Because Nam the county is a Biafran, he's championing it. Every Yoruba paper, they refuse to acknowledge the fact. But you, you claim you want to be in the same country with me. We are in the same country. You want us to be in the same country. But in your heart is deceit. In your heart is to cheat. If not deceit, and cheating. Why was it that when I announced that Buhari was dead, nobody bothered to investigate? Instead, you asked them to go and kill him. Because you have your eye on the presidency after Buhari. But I'm in the same country with you. You claim we are Nigerians, some of you. Wrongly, of course. You want us to love each other. 
Do you see how fake your love is? Yoruba, do you see how fake, fake, fake your love is? For the so-called Nigeria. So the reason why you love Nigeria is so you can be president in 2023. And I'm asking you, all of you with your PhDs from Yoruba land, are you not seeing what is happening, including the pastors you cannot see? Are you that wicked? You are also very blind. You cannot see the truth. You know, people are afraid to speak the truth, and I speak it. If I'm in the zoo, I will tell it to you. Anywhere I meet you, I tell it to your face. That all of you are evil. Very, very evil, all of you. By none. Very, very evil. People are calling. They shouldn't be calling, but they are, of course. We must try to get rid of this. They are calling when they shouldn't. Now, understand this very carefully. Those who are calling you their fellow Nigerians, let's make Nigeria great. Remember them? Let's make Nigeria great. We can build roads and bridges and schools. If they cannot speak the truth, having seen this little boy, now tell me how they can run a country, truthfully. Now, tell me how you expect to develop a country with lies. Tell me anywhere in the world where lies have actually worked. Show me, tell me one place. For ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's what we're doing this evening. I I'm laying the foundation. I will come to the substance of the matter in a short while. White people de depicted blacks as Lucifer. Because black people are satanic. After listening to this gospel tonight, you will understand. If you go back and you think, believe you me, you will be by tomorrow morning you will change. Accept the truth this night. Morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. By tomorrow morning, once you accept this gospel, when you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll be a different person altogether. I'm not attacking anybody, I'm just telling you the truth. Very simple truth. Why? There is a degree of evil inside every black man. I'm not saying that whites are not evil, no. Because if you read Hobbesism, State of Nature, you would know that man is a bit um, crazy in the brain. We know that. But once you go through formal education, even if informal, once you are capable of discernment, once you are capable of articulating a thought, once you are capable of looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, yes, I can now comprehend, there are some things you shouldn't do. And one thing that that is, is you shouldn't be evil. I want to ask you a question, all of you who are watching, those who are listening. How many professors do you have in Nigeria? How many pastors do you have in the billions? Or should I, no, sorry, in the millions. But you ask yourself, but where are they and all these things are happening? You have elders. There are some people that say, oh, we are elders. We are older than you. Why don't you respect us? We are elders. Why are you an elder and something is happen happening and you're keeping quiet? How can an elder be in the house and they go to give birth in, 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 in Ted? That is, it's not possible. And there's nobody to call them Blake Court. It doesn't happen. Now, ask those people that call themselves elders. Why should I call you an elder when impunity is happening in Asorok and you kept quiet? Why should I call you an elder? Why? Just tell me. They cannot. Because I am an evil man. Because I'm a Biafran. That was why the truth had been saying from day one. Even some Yoruba Irats cannot bring themselves to say, somebody wrote today and said, oh, um, it was predicted that um, Aisha would take over after Abakiari. And somebody quickly reminded him, uh, but the Khan said so. Or oh, you're not following. The, somebody wrote and asked him, why are you finding it difficult to say that it wasn't Nam the kind that said it? The commentator was Yoruba. But you want me to be in the same country with you. You claim you love me and you want us to be together. Let's build a happy one Nigeria. But look at your behavior. Is your behavior that of somebody that wants to grow and progress with somebody? Or is it that of somebody who wants to cheat, to deceive and to lie? Common credit you cannot give me on social media and you want me to build a country with you. How is that possible? 
Do you see how that's not going to work? Do you understand it now? You want me to be in the same country with Fulani? The same people that a president died in office. Instead of Oshiba to take over. They said no. They started hiring little little boys for Aisha to be sleeping with her. Over on water, little little kids. You want me to be in the same country with you. How is that possible when the basis of a relationship is just falsehood and lies? If you love Nigeria as you claim, the caliphate, the Janjaweed, you should have allowed Osibajo to take over. Simple. Next time you bring a healthy young man, maybe like Tambuwal, to contest and to run, so he will not die in office. And you are cursed. So, Fulani, you are cursed. You don't know this. You are cursed. Anybody who goes into Asarok will die there. I'm telling you now. Once you are Fulani, if you go into Asarok as a president, you will die in that very place. Try and see. I've been saying it for very many years. Some of you don't understand. You believe in building relationships based on falsehood, on lies. I don't believe in it. And when somebody tells you the truth, you cannot comprehend it. You don't understand. I am a black person. I am from Africa. I am a Biafran. So when I condemn black people, I am also condemning myself. Do you know why? When I go back and I think about it, I try to become a better person. I try to be that thing that the devil has planted into every black person in the world. How many pastors do you have? When you go to church or you go to Tare night, ask your pastor, all of you in the so-called zoo, Nigeria, go and ask your pastors or the imams in the mosque because they're, they're claiming they're holding a holy book. In the mosque, go and ask them. Why can't you speak out against what is happening? You're a man of God. Men of God and women of God, so to speak, should speak the truth always. That's why you're a man of God. Why is it that you're there in your palatial mansion in Abuja or in Lagos with money and ties people gave you, hoping you would take them to heaven through the path of truth? And you saw impunity happening, and you kept all would it be your pastors of Winners Chapel of um, Redeem and all of this of them, uh, the synagogue or mountain on the fire, fire in the valley, fire in the in upstairs, fire in downstairs. You claim you are worshipping God through Christ. Christ epitomized truthfulness. All of you. Christ was epitomized truthfulness. You are claiming the pulpit. You are seeing evil. What concerns you is a, a titan offering. And you think you go to heaven. None of them will go to, nobody, none of them, Pentecostal, I said none of them, both those putting on bleaching cream. Oh, what can I get? None of them will make heaven. They are evil. Christ was honest. Told the Pharisees and the Sadducees what he saw to be bad. Went to the house of God, the temple of Solomon, and drove away profiteers, the changing money. What matters to you is Titan offering. There is abomination happening. And all of you kept quiet. Abomination upon abomination. And you claim you're a man of God. If I meet, all of you should pray. I don't meet any of you anywhere. Be it airport or any, anywhere I meet. Any of you criminal Pentecostal. God will punish you. You people are evil. You are evil. I feel sorry for the fools. You're deceiving. You people are evil. You are in a country of 200 million. They are being held hostage. There is no head of state. People are being slaughtered every day. Every day people are dying because there is vacuum in Asarok. Nobody is there. That is the reason why. There is no leadership. Have you been into a house before? In a family where there is no father figure. Where nobody is in charge. No father, no mother. And see what the children are doing. It's a simple experiment. Experiment that all of you can do tonight, not tomorrow morning. Now, need this night, you can do it. I want you to take your wives away from the house, leave the kids. 
Lord did not say, oh, uh, my children, I'm coming. Oh. By the time you come back, your house will be upside down. Because dad is not there, mom is not there. Nobody to tell them, uh, stop doing what you're doing. The same thing is happening in Nigeria. You have seven terrorist groups, seven, seven of them, seven terror groups. And there is no head of state. There is no vice head of state, deputy, or should I say vice president. There is no chief of army staff. What do you expect those terrorists to do? They'll go to market now. They'll be doing anything they like. That is why you have killings everywhere. And nobody has a clue as to how to stop it. But these liars and deceivers, imams and pastors, those that claim they are elders and politicians, elder statesmen, to tell you how evil they are. They understand the problem. Any day you have a president, a physical living president inside that sort of things will change. That is why all over the world, when institutions or companies are going, are, are, are drifting, you change the CEO. You change. Ordinary football that some of you love, I think they've resumed. Barcelona defeated, um, I don't know who they beat yesterday, 4-0. Why do you think they sack their managers? When you are not performing, you'll be removed. Why do you think people vote every four years? It's, to, it's like a report card to see if you've done well or not done well. To renew your mandate or not to renew, to renew your mandate. But in this case, somebody died in office. Dead. Those who ran with dead. Instead of coming to people and saying, oh, this man is no longer there. What do we do? People are dying. Instead, you're holding on to it. You want to steal money. You want to deplete the treasury. You want to spread um, Islam, Jihad, by force. And people are dying because there is no president. And you know it. All of you, you know it. But you keep pretending, lying. You bring the back, oh, let, let, let's, let's, let's go to, let's go to, uh, to, to, to Matthew chapter 6, pastor. bring your tight. That's all you know. A man of God, you have aircraft, you have everything. You cannot speak the truth. How do you expect me to respect you? You are a deceiver, you are a liar. In the US, all of you will be jailed. All of you will go to jail. All of you will go to prison. But that is men of God in Africa. Black men, black misogyny, black evil. Now you can understand why the white man painted blacks black. Because of our evil nature. Evil nature inside us. And you want God to help you. You want God to save you? You are a hypocrite. An abundant hypocrite you are. All of you are hypocrites. Black people are hypocrites. They don't believe in the truth. They never see the truth and embrace it. Never. Nobody has, from Ibo land, even WIC, all of them, Ohanese, Pandev, no one has ever come to say, what is happening today, you predicted it many years ago. We are sorry. It's called magnanimity. They don't have it in them. Instead, you see them conniving, planning, talking rubbish every blessed day. You see grown-up men gossiping. That is what makes you black, and that is why you are backwards in Africa. Africans must know this. It is your nature. It is your wickedness and stupidity inside you. That is why whites are killing you. You are evil. You are evil. In a country of 200 million people. Not 1 million, not 2, not 3, 200 million. A group of people are holding everybody hostage. And instead of those with the sword of truth, which is journalism, Yoruba, to rise up and say evil is evil. A whole nation, Yoruba, they went into a cocoon, waiting for their turn in 2023, and you want me to respect you. I think you're mad, because I can't respect you. You're an evil person. You did not speak the truth because it is your turn in three years' time. And you want me to respect you as a human being. How is that possible? How? Just tell me how. It is not and can never be. 
never ever be. That's something that you need to understand. That is something that we're telling the whole world this very thing that blacks are evil. That is the truth. Whites are listening, and I'm telling you the truth. Before God and man, we are evil. Black people are evil. 200 million people. And they brought a little boy to show you, and you all should be always like that. Hey, it's not, it's not Buhari. Now, now we know it's not Buhari. Uh, uh, we think Buhari is no more there. Oh, hey, uh, oh, Jared, this thing bad. Oh. And tomorrow you say the same rubbish. Next week, the same nonsense. To rise up and take action, you cannot. If you see those who are rising up to take action, you begin to mock them that they are stupid. Because you're a black person. Everything that is good turns into bad. Everything bad turns into good. That is the brain of a black person. That is the way we reason. That is the way we think. That is the way we act. We are backwards because of how we reason. We are evil because of what is in our brain. I feel sorry for you people. I feel sorry for all of you. But I have to tell you the truth. Somebody wrote that Aisha Buhari is going mad. Mama and Dara called her a suicide bomber. In the leaked audio tape. A suicide bomb. And I'm asking people today. Can't you see that war is coming? Can't you see that men are going to die? Can't you see that terrorism flourishes where there is lawlessness? Can't you see that terrorism also grows anywhere there is vacuuming leadership? Are you not aware of that? Are you no longer students of history? Go and check it everywhere in the world. Right now in Nigeria, there is no president, there is no government. What you have is a gang of criminals. Anybody can get up one morning and say, oh, I'm controlling your neck. I don't like you. You didn't give me enough money in your first uh, time. I'm, I'm removing you now, and they'll be removed. What concerns me is not recycling all these problems. What I kept thinking about is, why is it that black people don't never act to make what is wrong right? I am asking black people, why don't you act on your act, on your conviction to say that this thing is wrong? I remember the Yoruba girl. I don't know her, what her name is. I don't want to make her popular. That went as the people that were fact-checking what I was saying about Jubilee were all Yoruba. Because Tinubu told them, don't make anything go wrong. Which is our turn. 2023. That stupid girl came on was talking rubbish. Today, she's no longer talking about her, Ms. Awa Buhario. And I'm the kind of what he's saying. Have you now seen it? I told her, I am always right. It's not arrogance. I am always right because anything I tell you is correct. Heaven, ask the family of Usiba will tell you, Usiba did your aunt not die in Arawojobe, a state in, in Ikeja? Yes or no? Ask him now. Were you not in Banana Island when you left Asarok? Were you in As are you in Asarok? Are you in Asarok and they're shooting gun in Asarok? Are you there? This is a vice president of 200 million people. You can't find him. Nowhere to be found. They called us terrorists. This, I want to let people understand the wickedness and evil of a black man. That is what I want to preach tonight. That blacks are evil. Because whites are listening. Black people in Africa are evil. Now, IPAB was banned, proscribed. Never killed anybody. Never picked up arms. All of you, we are dancing and celebrating, especially Yoruba people, Yoruba media. But you went to school. You are a good Christian. You are, you are a born-again Christian. Some of you are Muslims. You go to, you travel to, to Mecca to do Hajj. You believe in the word of God. You believe in the word of God. And you know that God can never side anything that is wrong. But all of you that go to church, that go to your mosque, even in Igbo land, with our Haneze and the governors, what happened? They said you must ban IP. That is a black man for you. Proscribe IPOB, tag them terrorist group. But not ISIS. Not Mieti Allah. These are murderers. On a daily basis, they kill. On a daily basis, they are killing. Nobody has ever said, come and proscribe them. 
But anytime they see a common from they say, Oh, you are proscribed, bro. The proscribed. If you see where Yoruba and the journalists as well, the proscribed, the outlawed IPOB because they are evil. Not outlawed me, that is a stakeholder in Nigeria. No, it's IPOB that is evil that never killed anyone, but asking for freedom for all of us is a black man. That's how we reason. So, whites are not racist. You heard me right, yes. Even the man that killed George Floyd is not a racist. Because racism doesn't, doesn't exist. Racism also is like darkness. It doesn't exist. Racism is your stupidity. People are showing you how stupid you are. And you call it racism. They are showing you how intellectually important you are. And you call it racism. If Africa was good, what would blacks be doing in America? Have any of you thought about that before? If Africa is good, what will blacks be doing in America? They will be still coming back. Because we are not well. Black people are not well in the brain. And you know the funniest thing is that for you to go and seek medical help, you must acknowledge that you are sick. For you to wake up in the morning to go and see a doctor, you must say to yourself, today I'm not feeling very well, I have to go and see a doctor. The thing about the mental stupidity of black people is this. Most of you don't know you're sick in the brain. You, everything you, that is, you say is an insult. You're insulting me. Yeah. Because over the years, people have written, they have spoken. You don't want to learn. You don't want to change. To the point whereby a woman, one, I cannot be a woman, a young woman. I'm older than Aisha. A young woman brought her lover, put her lover in front of national TV. And all of you are clapping. And you're telling me you're normal. I'm telling you, you're an animal. You are a big fool. Very big one. Very big one. I must tell you. Because the zoo is collapsing. And you watch and see. You watch and see. Why do we find it difficult to act on our conviction? It was because I lamented a few days ago. That was why the, the, the senior advocates of Nigeria, for the first time, since they started the persecution of innocent people, they are now saying, let me tell you what the, the legal profession is now saying in Nigeria. 21 years of democracy, there is no rule of law. It's now that you know there's no rule of law. When they charged me to court for nothing, I told you I committed no crime. Some of you said, oh God, thank him. He wants to bring trouble in the polity. He wants to destabilize the polity. But now, what are the bandits doing? What are the kidnappers doing? What are the terrorists doing in the north? Who are they? Where did they come from? They didn't come to destabilize the polity? Oh no, they brought the blessing of Allah. They brought Allah's blessing to Nigeria. These are people of the judiciary. Why are they talking now? Because I said it a few days ago. Because I lambasted them. If you have brain, I'm telling you. If you are similar, I'm telling you tonight. By tomorrow, you will be a different person altogether in your life. And you see the changes you will make. The, the most difficult thing for a black man to admit is that we are racially inferior. Why are we inferior? Because how, of how we process information in our brain. That's all. The processing of information in the brain of a black man is defective. That is why we are not able to act on our conviction. That is why morally a black man is bankrupt all over the world. If you are not bankrupt morally, why would an entire Yoruba race be waiting for 2023? Uh, and meanwhile, there is fraud going on. Open fraud going on. You have elders. You have clergymen, you have intellectuals, and all of you are sitting back because of only eight years of governance. You mortgage your and you want me to respect you? You must be insane. I can't. That was what happened with Jonas and Ohaneze. For very many years, they were selling their, their, their future and all of their children. Until we said, Enough is enough. When he said, oh, you're, you're insulting elders, I said, Any elder that will be that age. And selling his children should be hanged, not insulted. Should be his name should be cut off. 
Only in Africa, if somebody is old and you're being stupid, you, you're a pedophile, molesting little girls. Oh, no, don't worry, he's his uncle. Sick people everywhere. Today, or should I say yesterday, there were gunshots in the presidency. I asked this question last week. Where in the world have you seen fire outbreak in a presidential villa before? Now, gunshots. And do you know what really shocks me as a human being? Is the, is the, is the very flippant way that so-called Nigerians deal with these issues. In other words, your education system is defective. I think that the biggest culprit is the education system in the zoo. They train you to be animals. They don't train you to be human beings. Gunshots in the presidency. Anywhere else in the world, the Senate will convene an emergency session to investigate. And during the course of investigation, you'll be discovered that there's, no, there's nobody there. But everybody's in on it. Once you give them money to buy a house in Dubai or invest in China for themselves and their families, you've made their life. They can tolerate any evil. Any evil goes. Gunshot inside that rock. What caused the it is pathetic. Who knows that there is no Buhari after this incident? Who knows there is no Buhari there? Your wife was nearly shot dead. And you're a, and you are alive. Even as an ordinary person, you're not a president. Your wife narrowly escaped being shot. What will you do as a man? I'm asking you a question. All the signs are there that there is no Buhari. But everybody is burying their heads in shame. Do you know why? Because they are black people. They don't act on their convictions. They only support evil. That is why Africa is poor. That is why we are being killed. There is nothing called racism. That is why year after year, you will not hear that a Singaporean was killed, or a Malaysian was killed in the West. You won't hear that a South Korean was killed. Never. Or a Russian was killed. Never. Only blacks. Have you ever asked yourself why? No, you don't. Oh, it's racism. Uh, they hate blacks. It's because you are foolish. It's because God punished you with stupidity because God looked in your heart and knew you were evil. I'll prove it to you now, this night. Do you know why? I'll give you an example. That God in heaven gives everybody the same chance. The same chance. Now, um, I have a question to ask you. What justification does the Yorubas have? I said, what justification do they have? In supporting this fraud going on. An entire nation of over 60 million people. Ask yourself why. Is this Satan that is doing it? You mean what they have? They have doctors, they have lawyers, they have pastors, they have imams, they have everything. Intellectuals, they have it. But ask yourself, why is it that Yorubas are supporting the evil, the satanic, the, the, the work of Lucifer going on in the zoo? Is it a, a fault of a white man? Is, is, is it the, the fault of the British? I'm asking a simple question. Why would 70 million people be programmed in their brain that is cheating? In their, they, they have been programmed to cheat. Cheating is in their brain. Because if you're seeing evil happening and you're waiting for 2023, it means you're a bad person. Some of them are sick. So you wait for 2023 to go to hospital? I'm asking you a question. Are you waiting to go 2023 then you go to hospital 2023? No. Go short in Asorok. I shot him out. You know that very daft. You're telling me that Buhari is inside Asorok. Now listen to this story. Buhari is inside Asorok. There was gunshot shot inside Asorok. I shot an out with the Aisha, uh, Zara, Yusuf, and uh, is it Zainab, the other one. They are so foolish. When they plan all this, their lies, they don't plan it very well. They forgot to mention Buhari. That Buhari also came out. Instead, I said oh, the, the, the president was not touched. So, but your wife ran out. Your kids ran out. But you, the man that gave birth to the kids, 
He stayed inside. <laughs> hey, Africa, who did this to you? <laughs> black. This Yoji. Black. Black people. Black. Very, very deadly. Very, very deadly. They proscribed IPOB. They said we're a terrorist group. <laughs> but today, Janja weed are slaughtering down your villages, killing you. They killed somebody yesterday. You know good. Nobody saying prescribe them all. Nah, it's IPOB they want to prescribe. That's black people for you. This year, black, black. Satanic equensu, Satan is in them. So when a white man draws a black man as Lucifer, the white man is correct. I support him. You people are evil. People are evil. Tomorrow, I can carry the Bible. What am I to God? We serve talking rubbish. Nonsense from your useless mouth. Rubbish. You think I mock God? Do you think I mock God in heaven? Is that what you think? An entire nation, Yoruba nation, disgracefully, because of only eight years in office, you get this on your morals, no conviction, nothing, nothing. That means you're a nation of criminals. Your brain is full of thievery. If not, why, why won't you speak up or speak out against evil? You're waiting for, he's cheating. Isn't it? Oh, dear Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on our people. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Why are black, why is it that we find it difficult to reason? A woman is head of state in an Islamic country. Nigeria is OIC, is, an, is, is, a, is a member of Islamic nations. It's an abomination in Islam. For a woman to be in charge, it's an abomination. Unelected. I don't mind, I don't, you know, I'm a Biafran. Anybody can be the head of state in Biafra land. If left for me, I would even uh, like women to rule Biafra, not, not men. I'm being honest with you. In Islam, I told you that when I back here, I, I told you, before he died, I told you he was going to die. A woman in, is the head of state in Islam. <laughs> and do you know why that one they call Tundera? He's not Tundera, he's a, he's a, he's a full animal, no? He's a full animal, no? The son of a mama and Dawa. He's a full, not Tunde. When they say Tunde, you think he's a, just like, uh, like I'm a, as he wrote to me, you think he's a rubber boy. No. <laughs> Do you know why he ran away from Aisha? Because if he dies on the orders of a woman, when he goes to heaven, he, they will not give him his 72 virgins. His 72 Arab virgins waiting for him in heaven. That was why he ran away from Aisha. That is the truth. And they know it. You, a president is alive, gunshot inside where he's living. He didn't come out with his wife and children to investigate. And all of you, 200 million, 200 million idiots, complete morons, you are there. You looking sheepishly like a bunch of white. In fact, the hyenas better than all of you. What, what, why, why do I even. Can you come and manage my mecca? If I want to, to, to interact, I, that is why I don't, I don't go to parties. I don't do anything. Because I, I, the way we reason is, is laughable. If I want to interact with Af true Africans, I go, to, I go to Wild Love Safari Park. At least if I see a zebra, a chimpanzee, those are our true Africans. We can mingle together. Maybe I, I can understand them better. Because at least if they see danger, they can run. All of you, you see danger and you keep embracing it. Keep embracing it. Look at Timo State. How many people in Timo State? Over 5 million. Somebody came forth in an election. They pushed him to number one. Everybody's just like this. Even some bishops want to go and congratulate him. Some people said, hey, don't touch him. Oh. He, he's our man. Hey, let's move him forward. These are black people. Very backward. Useless when they kill in America, he said, hey, It's racism. Racism. You are a fool. That's not like racism. They are killing you because of your natural stupidity. By nature, you are stupid as a black person. Do you have running water? Without uh, 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 maybe solar charger and generator, will you be watching me now? Are you not ashamed of yourselves? 
Are you not ashamed? But uh, UNN has engineering department, electrical engineering, uh, electrical and electrical gas, well, all that rubbish. Uniport has it. Uniben has it. Everywhere. Uh, uh, electrical and electrical engineering. Whatever that rubbish means, I don't know. Uh, uh, no, elect electrical and electronics. But there is no light. The reason why they sent you to school to go and study electrical engineering is so that when you come out, there will be no more power shortage in the village. That's the reason why. So you don't know. <laughs> hey, hey zu, zu, zu the bunch of monkeys. <laughs> so you think you studied electrical? Is it electronics and electrical? I don't know what they call it. Electrical and electrical to come out and be pushing wheelbarrow, driving Kagena Pep. Uh, black people, Miss UG. Black. <laughs> you people are a disgrace on this earth. I think maybe God made a mistake creating black people. It's a disgrace. <laughs> I am curing you your disease. Now I'm not going all your disease, cleansing of your brain. So you can reason. You have seen how Yoruba is learned 70 million. All of them are in a, in a state of fraud. A fraudulent state. Let's cheat. Let us. Who are we going to cheat now? Who are we going to cheat now? And people are dying. What concerns you is ordinary election 2023. People are dying. Oh dear. <laughs> it's only in Africa I can see an entire nation wrapped in fraud. Everybody has the mindset of who do I cheat? Who can? Who am I going to cheat now? Who am I going to cheat now? If not, why won't you come out and say that um, Buhari is dead? Why not? Do you know, in that 2017, had the Yoruba media taken up the campaign that I started? By now, Oshibajo will be the president and there uh, won't be all these killings everywhere. So every Christian that have died all these years is as a result of Yoruba duplicity. You don't expect uh, Aosa to do anything. Aosa, uh, Aosa doesn't exist. Fulani have you? <laughs> in fact, uh, they don't exist. Have you heard me before mention Hausa as a political force? No, they don't exist. It's only Fulani and Yoruba. And I'm asking Yoruba, do you think if Osibajo is there, the people will be dying? Osibajo is a gentleman. He's a man of the law. He won't allow it. Are you aware of that? Osibajo can never allow it. But I'm asking you now, what have you benefited in all the people that have died? All because you want to, 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 be, the, to be the president in 2023. And you conditioned the Yoruba race, as great as they are, mighty. Their empire was huge, all the way to the women. A once proud race, a race of warriors and conquerors, to reduce them to this, waiting for, for three more years to get into power. And impunity is happening. And you go to church and you call the name of God with your Bible. Thunder will kill all of you. You people are you are evil. Evil. Entire nation, entire nation wrapped in fraud. In they, they have given as you're growing up, they, they, they are infusing fraud into you, into your brain. How do I cheat a Biafran? How do I cheat an evil man? That is all that they can, that is all they live for. Have I, uh, at the end of the day, is, have I cheated an evil man today? That is the pinnacle of your achievement. That is who you are as a person. You are living the life of a parasite, I, I, the life of a liar and a deceiver. And you want God to bless you. You want God to bless you. How is that possible, I ask? Do you think you can mock God? Or oh, because of your earthly wealth, you got from idiots who cannot reason very well. The heaven you're promising them, can you guarantee it? The answer is no. Do you know where heaven is? <laughs> um, okay, okay. Okay, okay. You, you don't know who I am. One of our aunts said um, that we are burning bridges. We are burning bridges. I will burn every bridge, including the one that I'm standing on. If I'm stupid, I will, I will set it to my, I'll light myself. 
If I'm a stupid black man by now, I would, I, I would take over those and I will kill myself. I hate stupidity. You see, cowardice and stupidity, I cannot stand those two things. I can't stand them. You must be bold and be brave and speak the truth and damn the consequences. Damn it. That is why the zoo is crumbling and you people are... Uh, you, you, you can't even complain. Gunshot, a woman in a Sharia country. A woman is head of state. In Sharia. After all, then they have to have um, Sharia states in the north. They are the owners of the, of the zoo called Nigeria. How come Aisha is ruling all of you? Don't you know that she's the one in charge? Go and listen to that clip again. Because probably we'll Sarah reporters or whoever. Telephone conversation. Then you will know. It was in December, let, to tell you how cold they are. Do you remember a few weeks ago when the report of the speech of, um, of Jubril leaked? Do you remember? Do you know that the person responsible for that speech leaking has been killed? I want you to go to Google it. Asarok, assistant director of administration, assassinated. Killed in Abuja because she leaked the speech of Jubril. That's all. She was killed in broad daylight. Killed, assassinated. And, and le, le, her name is Miss Leticia Dagan. Killed inside Nigeria. Killed inside Abuja. Killed, assassinated. Assassinated, killed. Some of you don't even know. Remember when Femi Adesina was writing, as, uh, is the height of this, the person who leaked it. Every head of state in the world have had their speech leaked, leaked at one time or the other. Licking of this isn't a new thing. But because of that, she has played with her life. You, some of you don't even know. Are you aware of what I'm telling you now? Is that the type of country you want to be in? And I want to ask Yoruba Pentecostal pastors, because they win a lot of influence. I want to ask Yoruba pastors, is this the type of country you want to be in? That somebody just be mere accusation let they they resulted in her summary execution in cold blood they didn't go to court to try her she was killed and you're asking me to be a nigerian is it the type of nigerian woman to be in her name is leticia dagan d-a-g-a-n assassinated she worked in the presidential villa and i'm asking those telling me about one nigeria is this the type of country you want me to be in not killed by a bandit, not a terrorist, no, no, killed in, oh, Chine Kemi, killed by the presidency itself, the head of state. And I ask you, is this the type of country you want me to belong to, who you and I, um, and I fought earlier, we'll be messing ourselves up. Is this the one Nigeria? And I'm asking you, those of you that want us to be together, is this how countries are run? You chased away your vice president. Usubajo. Ran away, he's in Lagos. I don't know if they have found him now or not. Because they will kill him. Once they get hold of him, they will kill him. What I'm telling you are confirmed reports. Because people said, somebody said to me, Oh, but you said that Usubajo is dead. I said, yes, I said it. They said, but, but, but why? But why? I said, because he is missing. Presumed dead. Oh, but why are you saying it? I said, because if you go missing today, and I suspect that the police or the army are the people holding you, I will go to court and I will file a complaint called habeas corpus, which means produce the dead body. Do you understand? That's what we do. We are learned. We have brain. Do you now understand it? After Osibajo was cited, after our intelligence gathered, he was cited, in Arojobe, his trail went cold. And the reason why they are not complaining in Yoruba land is because they are, everybody is waiting for, for, for Tifnubu in 2023, an entire nation. That's their reason for not claiming their mandate. But we are going to shock them. We are going to shock them. That I can assure you. <laughs> PDP came out and was expressing um, uh, um, shock. And I just spoke. Asked the police, release this pe person you arrested for firing a shot. Police said no. And this is the supposedly the wife of the most powerful man in the country. She didn't go to her husband to ask 
for the release of her aid. No. She went to the police direct, tweeted it. If you don't know that Buhari is dead, then may the good Lord have mercy upon your stupid, foolish black soul. I'm telling you the truth. Because the whole thing is becoming annoying. Very, very annoying. Very, very annoying. And we must preach this very gospel. We must preach it. The presidency now issued a statement. Listen very carefully, please. The presidency wishes to acknowledge concerns. Presidency, not the president. Wishes to acknowledge concerns expressed by several members of the public regarding the incident about the occupants of the, of, of the villa. Hey, she may come here. This is to assure all of you and everyone that the president and commander in chief of the armed forces, Muhammad Buhari, is not and was not at any time in any form of danger arising either from deadly infections or the reported incident. Nobody asked him about coronavirus. So. This is how foolish they are. Fulani. This is how daft they are. They were talking about firing of um uh, uh of a firearm, so to speak, firing a, a gun in, in Asarok. They asked him to issue a statement. Instead of him to say that the president is okay and he will address us, and he said, and he did not contract any coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, let me ask those who are watching, black people, who did this to you? <laughs> Nisioji, who did this? Is it Satan that did it or was it God? Who did this to you? They asked him, there was an incident, a discharge of firearms inside Aso Villa. What happened? He said the president is okay. He's not injured and he's not suffering from coronavirus. <laughs> hey, Zoo. Mm -hmm. Black people, <laughs> they want to assure everyone he's okay, but the man cannot speak. Signed by Chef, the man cannot speak. So you, you don't even love anywhere in the world. They will say, "Bring our president. We want to see him to make sure he's alive." But one statement, and he's okay because Yoruba media they are just <laughs> massaging your all of you. Apart from Boko Haram and the Fulani Janja Widdism, Yoruba media is the worst set of people on the face of the planet. The worst of the worst. The very worst. I'm telling you the truth. Before God and before man. And I hope they listen to me and they change. Because they will get their comeuppance. They will get it. I told them, write it down. One day, Fulani will take Yoruba land. Fulani will take Yoruba land. They will take it. They will take it. In broad daylight, you, they will take it. From Yoruba, people, you see. Write it down. I'm a, I am behind a microphone. I am speaking because I'm ordained to speak the truth. Before it will happen, I will tell you what will happen in five years' time. With accuracy. Deadly accuracy. And I'm telling you that full and will take Yoruba land. Mark it somewhere. Because their evil is too much. The whole nation, you're waiting for 2023. The truth is there. Is that little one editorial from a Yoruba paper and the whole thing unravels? They're waiting for 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, Baba, Baba, Baba said he will give us money in 2023. And me too, I want to buy a house in London. Oh. I'm waiting for 2023. Uh, uh, Jagaban will be in. We will we, we go begin the chop now. And on Sunday, you take the Bible and you go to church or you go to mosque. And you bow before God. And you say, God, I'm your servant. But you're waiting for three years of deceit and lies. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And as they are campaigning now, have come to the... To the oh, I'm just giving you preamble. I have come to today's program. <laughs> I have now come to today's program. It's about racism. And the reason why God created us black. And the meaning of the word black. And the reason why I told you before, I told you before, I told you before, that uh, Democrats, I don't trust them in America. They are not good people. Anybody that, anybody who comes and tells you now, oh, no, the kind of this thing that he's doing is he, not good, or he's insulting people, and the person is your enemy. Doesn't want you to learn. I am trying to shock you into reasoning. 
it, into coming out of your evil, wicked, black, African ways to embrace the light. I'm the one who loves you. Not these mad people. And I want to show you something so you will understand what is happening. People can now begin to appreciate the depth of idiocy in the zoo. The depth of the idiocy in the zoo. I want to, to make it very... Where is it? Where is this um, um, Joe Biden? Remember some people said that Joe Biden is a good man. Yes? <laughs> in fact, they have even... I think they have removed the clip. <laughs> they have removed it. <laughs> Joe Biden of Democrats. A hardened racist. I told you about the Democratic Party. Forget all that uh, Black Lives Matter rubbish. They are the real racists. Republicans are your friends. Do you know why? Republicans will tell you what I'm telling you. Because they want you to change. It was Republicans that ended slavery, not Democrats. Do you know who the slave owners were in America? Democrats. They removed it. I'll find it. And I want that video to be posted, please. I want the video of, of um, what's his name? Joe Biden. The killing of black people in America by the police. Joe Biden introduced the legislation. Democratic Party. <laughs> you, know, they, you know, black people, we like massaging. If you have a wound now, instead of going and dressing the wound properly, maybe, uh, you know, having a surgery or conducting a surgery on it, you, you want them to put, put bandage, you know, a, a very colorful bandage on it, on the, but inside you're rotting inside. That is the problem with our people. And we are carrying it tonight. All this nonsense we are carrying from your brain. <clears throat> now listen to this. <clears throat> what is the Latin word for black? And now I want Nigerians. This we have now come to the main point this evening. I want Nigerians to be looking at their green, white, green flag. Wherever you are, if you're in Abuja, if you're in Lagos, if you're in Kaduna, bring your green, white, green flag closer. We are about to do a very simple experiment, please. What is the Latin word for black? I want you to Google. As I'm Googling, please try and do the same thing. What is the Latin word for black? You simply go to Google and Google it, please. And we are doing good. It's interactive now. We want to do everything together like one happy family. So I am writing. What is the Latin meaning of the word uh, we're live uh, of the word black. Uh, I'm sorry, you cannot see it. I'm not that tech savvy. What's Latin meaning of the word black? <laughs> What's the Latin meaning of the word black? Black. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Go to your Google and you put it in. We are live and interactive. We have come to the stage whereby if Facebook doesn't shut me down now, they don't shut it down again. If, right now, go and Google the meaning of the word black. The Latin meaning of the word black. And bring your Nigerian flag closer. Green, white, green. Bring it close. To tell you where your stupidity started from. What is black? In Latin. It means nigger. Negros, Negros, <laughs> or the adjective is nigger. What is that nigger? What I want to tell you what God did, Elohim. I want to tell you why you are black in Africa, all of us. And I want to prove to you that the name Nigeria is cursed. And then after tonight's program, you will see need and reason why Nigeria should not exist. I'm not going to add anything to this. We want to do something. I want to read comments. Somebody should tell me I'm reading. If I move to the to the left, it means I'm checking Radio Biafra. If I'm here, direct it is my page on Facebook Live. I want somebody to tell me the Latin Google it. The Latin meaning of the word black. This Yoji, do you know what it means? 
It means Negro. Number one. The adjective is Niger or Niger. If you look, you, you think it's Niger State. N I G E R. Niger. Nigeria. Latin. Meaning of the word black. Then we proceed. What does it mean? Those who brought the word black, this Negro and Niger, Nigeria, what did they have in mind? Who are they trying to describe? That's the meaning of the of adjective, isn't it? To qualify, to describe something. What is it? Hey, now you're in for a shock. The name Nigeria. <laughs> it means black, black, we know. It means something that is dark, we know. It means something that is ill omen, bad luck. Ill omen. So Nigeria is bad luck. Not me, oh. Go to Google. Oh. Then I'm going to Google self. Who are these people self? Nah, nah, I got Google. Who are these people? I have not seen anything here. Oh. I have not seen anything here. Somebody is saying I shouldn't talk about Democrats in America. You see how foolish people are. That election is pregnant. Black people always are afraid to speak the truth. Joe Biden is a racist. We have it on record. Forget all the nonsense in South Africa. He was saying about apartheid. He is a conquest. I have it here. I will find it this time and play it. Go, go, to, go to Google now. Go to Google and find the meaning of the word black. Then nobody hears it. Are they uh, listening to me or not? Huh? Uh -huh. It means Negro. It means Niger. <laughs> Niger State. <laughs> Capital Mina. N Niger Republic in French. <laughs> Nigeria, area of black, useless people. And what does it mean? It means ill omened. It means Nigeria means pitch black. Nigeria means unlucky. The people that coined the word black and called you nigger, Nigeria. So a name that is banned in America, Negro, is what you're answering in Nigeria. Do you see your life? This is, I'm an intellectual. I'm a professor. Those IPOB, they are, are mysteries. I have four degrees oh, from Princeton, from Harvard. Do you know the meaning of your name is ill omen? Omen. Ill omen. Do you know that your name is unlucky? Do you know that? That you are a nigger. You are a negro. Nigger, nigger. And I am proud to be a Nigerian. That is why if you call me a Nigerian, God, Satan will punish you upon the punishment you have. Check up all of the thunder will fire you. All of you refer to me as a Nigerian and God in heaven will punish you and punish your family. Ill omen. Unlucky. Nigger. Negro. That's your name. A name a white man gave to you. A name you're fighting very hard to maintain. Do you see how foolish you are? <laughs> As a Nigerian? <laughs> Do you see how foolish you are? Your name means, it's here now, unlucky. It means black, gloomy, gloomy. It means dismal, dismal. Something that is dismal. Hey, Chineke, obscure. You cannot see it. There is no light. It's obscure. That's the meaning of the word Nigeria. I'm giving it to you now, live and direct. Something you will not hear anywhere else in the world. Here you will hear it. <laughs> hey! Now, nigger area. Who named you Nigeria? A racist. <laughs> what is Niger State? It means unlucky, ill-omened, gloomy, dismal, obscure. I'm from Niger State. We Niger State indigenous. <laughs> Do you see why blacks are useless? In this, we are we are useless. God knows we are useless. Blacks are useless. Useless to the core. Nigeria. Look at Niger. The name you Niger Republic for French. Nigeria for English. And I ask you, you that is saying you're from South South or Niger Delta. 
I don't want to go there. <laughs> uh, dear me. <laughs> I want to ask those of you from Obomosho in Yoruba land or from Ijebuode. That is uh, Niger Republic, which means Niger, up near Sudan. You, you are Nigerian from Obomosho. Are you related uh, by blood? Uh, how how come? Are you witnessing your stupidity live and direct? Do you see how foolish you are when you call yourself a Nigerian? Do you see how daft you are? You are you are you are unlucky. You are ill omened. You are dismal. You are gloomy. That is your name, and you expect Nepal to give you light. When your name is darkness, you want Nepal to give you light. Hey, Chine Keme, unbelievable. What is the origin of the world black? Who originated it? <laughs> it's from Europe now. It's from Europe. And then let us look at what white means. <laughs> oh, dear me. It means purity, clean, pure, radiant. <laughs> And then what does the... Uh, everything is there. You can see it. <laughs> uh, what in the Bible that we have, in the black Bible that... Uh, 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 what's their name? Uh, Ateboye is stealing... Bleeding you dry from. <laughs> Facebook has come. I told you. <laughs> from 25,000, we have now gone to... They've taken away 900 uh, people, which means 9,000 people. I told you, there is no way I can, we cannot remain like this and finish this impossible. They can't allow it. But we continue to preach. We continue to preach. <laughs> hey, dear me. What does it mean in Christianity? <laughs> uh, black is the color of mourning. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> it means mourning. Black Somebody should type it in Google, please, and publish it for the world to see. What is the meaning of, listen, Google meaning of the color black in the Bible. In the Bible, what is the meaning of nigger? This Nigeria you're answering. That's what we're getting at. Because if you agree that black is a Negro nigger, what, is the, what does the Bible tell you about Nigeria? Now you see, we are now going a bit spiritual. What does the Bible tell about Nigeria? I'm about to tell you. The Bible says that Nigeria is a place that lacks brightness, that is no light. It does not reflect any light back. Which means all they do is to take in from people. They don't give a head. The same way we are consuming a toothpick, toothbrush, everything we import is even in the Bible. It's here now. I'm reading it now. It's, I googled it and it is here. The meaning of the color black in the Bible. So Nigeria means in the Bible a place that is backward. Backward. No light. They consume everything. Even the cause of the name Nigeria is in the Bible itself. But if you go to church now, they only take you to where you pay your tithe. You sow your seed. You water your plant. But on radio, Biafra will tell you the truth. I told you after today, your life will no longer be the same. From I'm asking you to go and check it out. You'll you, you be astonished. You'll be astonished. That is, the, that is how the world flows. So you're a Nigerian now? How many of you, after this night, a Nigerian? I said, how many of you are Nigerians? I'm asking you. How many of you are? <laughs> The zoo cannot think critically. They cannot reason. That's why they, they say, I'm, I said, I will be arrogant. I went to school, I'm educated, I'm refined. If I stand you in a debate, I will demolish you within two minutes. Complete deconstruction in two minutes, I will obliterate you with facts and figures. If you're, if you're intelligent, tell, uh, uh, let us go and have a debate. I'm lying to you, I finish you completely. Go, go, go. You didn't go to school and you want to challenge somebody who's educated. How is that possible? You went to school and you read with lantern and palaka. You use palaka to read. 
and they gave you a third rate uh, law degree and you come out and you think you can challenge me? It must be insane. Completely insane. We are live and we are direct and the whole world is listening. We are educating ourselves today to tell you how bad a black person is evil. Embodiment of evil. A black man is evil. I'm trying to prove it to you. So that uh, if you survive tonight by tomorrow, uh, you'll be a changed person. Your life will be way better than it is tonight. That is what we are praying for. And that's exactly what we are going to get. There is, I want somebody to understand. There's something called the psychology of, uh, of black. <laughs> something called the psychology of black. I want somebody to Google it. The color psychology of black. The color psychology of black. <laughs> hey, Zoo. Zoo is in trouble. We are dealing with Nigeria. <laughs> the color psychology of black. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> Unbelievable. 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 <laughs> Unbelievable. Black is often used as a symbol of menace or evil. Black is for death and mourning. So when Boko Haram are killing you, you're just fulfilling what the whole world, because you are the name that you answer. How many people come out today to answer Jezebel? A simple example. How many people will name their daughter as Jezebel? I'm asking you a simple question. Will you name your daughter Jezebel? No. <laughs> but you call yourselves Nigerians nigger. A condemned word. A name that doesn't resonate. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad. Of course, Facebook, they're doing their job now. I thought they went to sleep before. <laughs> they are now doing their job. <laughs> They are now doing their job because the whole world is listening. The whole world is listening. And because white people radiate light, that is why we answer the light of God. You must, you need light to be able to see. If you're in darkness, pitch black, you cannot see. And that is what is happening in Nigeria. People cannot see. They cannot see. They are blind. And here, we make you try to see the light. Very, very important. One of the greatest rulers in the history of Belgium is King Leopold II. King Leopold. He went to do a lot of job for them in, um, in Congo. And he, to an extent, I think he may have um, succeeded in Congo. Colonized the place. But today... They are pulling his statues down in Antwerp, in Bruges. Everywhere they find his statue, they are taking it down. His family is still ruling. I want to let you understand how white people reason. I said the family of Leopold is still ruling, to, is a royal family that is still ruling Belgium till today. His, his um, should I say, his great, great grandchildren are in charge. No. Not great, great. His grandchildren are in charge of Belgium, King Leopold. Yet, white Belgians went and destroyed his statues because they have conscience. Something that blacks don't have, something the Yoruba race don't have, and may never have in their in their entire existence on this earth. It takes courage and conviction. To have the presence of mind to confront evil. Nobody has been able to tell me why a nation of 70 million people, because of eight years of political power, will sit idly by and impunity will be happening on a daily basis. Nobody can tell me why. In Belgium, despite their colorful history, Despite the fact that the grandchildren of this man are sitting on the throne of Belgium, ordinary white people went out and destroyed the statues of King Leopold. Courage and conviction 
And here, that is what we believe in. But not Abacha has a stadium. Abacha, Abacha has a stadium. Named after him. Uh, uh, Pa Edwin Clark is, uh, is uh, an influential man in a Jolland. But he was a traitor. He sold his own land for money. And he was rewarded with the chairman of Pandev. Neamodo. His father was a traitor during the war. He was rewarded with Hanese chairman. Are you surprised? That is why they're killing us. They cannot talk. They, they can't speak. Can't you see? And I will analyze his letter later on. Here. You see, I have it here. The letter he wrote to, to, to the 30-year-old to, to the boy. That was why when the British came, they saw the light in Biafra. In here, Chineke, they saw it. In Arochugu. And they said that you have no history, as I told you before. And... Uh, I want everybody to go to Google again, oh, because we are lecturing today and type in the word Sambation. I want to teach you something this very day that will shock even our enemies. Go to Google and you type in this word, please. S-A-M-B-A-T-Y-O-N. It's called Sambat. Yon is called the Sambatian River. <laughs> I give Elohim praise. Sambatian River. Go and as I'm reading it, I want you to be reading it, please. Sambatian River. So you'll be shocked. I told you everything I tell you is gospel from heaven. I don't add anything of mine. As I'm giving the message from heaven, I give it to you. Three people make up the Biafran people. The whole of Biafra. Forget uh, all these other names. The whole of Biafra. The Igbo people. The house of God. And his um, nephews. Ephraim and Manasseh. Are you listening to me? There are the ancient Ndibo, the ancient people who are there. The first wave of migrants came from Egypt. The, the, the second wave came from Samaria. Three people. One came from Egypt, Sudan. Egypt, Sudan, Niger, Yoruba land, into Igbo land. First wave, the house of God. The house of Ephraim and Manasseh came through Egypt, came through Djibouti, went through the upper lands of um, Ethiopia, came into the Afar region of Ethiopia, proceeded through the Central African Republic we know today, into Cameroons, and into Biafra land. The third and the final wave that came. Three people make up the land of Biafra. Three. And when I say that um, Biafrans are Israelites or Hebrew, not all of it. I've told you this before. So there will be no confusion. I want you to go and type in Sambation. Some spell it S-A-M-B-A-T-I-O-N. S for sugar. A for apple. M for mother. B for bravo. A for apple. T for tango. I for India. O for Oscar. And N for November. You can find it at Sambation. I read it. <laughs> Oh dear me. In the earliest literature, where do I begin? What is Sambation? It is the mythical river. It is the mythical river. Oh God in heaven. A river of stone. A river of stone that took Jews to every part of the world. There was a man that wrote Many, many centuries ago, many centuries ago, unbelievable, this is shocking, shocking, I'm telling you, the river Sambation flew, flowed beyond the rivers of Abyssinia. 
Remember when I told you about the Afar region and I told you about Biafra, Biafra, Biafra is and Biafra. This man is saying that exact place that we located on the map has to have Biafra in it during the migration was where this very river was located. And these are Jewish scholars of note. Josephus, Pilni the Elder. These people we are writing in the ancient days. In ancient days. Even, even uh, an, an, an Arabian writer, but his name is Abraham Abulafia. And this same river was mentioned in Second Kings as well in the Bible. The river that flowed beyond the rivers of Abyssinia. And what is Abyssinia is Ethiopia. If you go beyond Ethiopia, it becomes the kingdom of Biafra. It's here. I didn't write it. Everything we tell you is gospel. Everything we tell you is gospel. Absolute gospel. Some people don't understand. They don't reason very well. But here we reason. Go and research it. Sambation is an assignment. Go and read it. Then you will understand the miracle that Elohim is doing in our lives. You must understand it. They say you have no history. I don't know that the, the British discovered something they never wanted anybody to see. They said, uh, your name is now Nigeria. <laughs> it means gloomy. It means dark. It means evil. Oh, dear me. They said that the most, credible, the most credible account is that given by a Jewish writer and traveler. He's the most credible. His name is Eldad the Danite. You know, the tribe of Dan. In his letter to the Jews in Spain in the year... 883 AD. He said, Who are we? <laughs> and the children of light. The children of light. There's something I want to play for you. There is something that I wish to play for you that the whole world may understand it. To know who we are. To know why we are agitating for Biafra. To tell the so-called misguided, foolish elders that cannot see, that are not learned, to let them understand why we do what we do. They know nothing. That is why we are the way we are. They know nothing. I want to show you something. There's a possibility Listen. That the international community can be brought to bear, the UN. Uh, Listen. The of human rights all the way through. This is a very... No. It has gone, it has, oh my goodness, it has gone. I will try to play it from here. Try to play it. From up TV. But I amplify Listen. that uh, we believe that there's a possibility that the international community can be brought to bear, the UN. Uh, Listen. The Declaration of Human Rights all the way through. This is a very, very serious matter. There's something that I a didn't white man. and I hesitate. A white man, a white man. I'm not Nigerian, although I think uh, Dr. Lloyd has bestowed upon me the honorary title of Nigerian man. <laughs> and he was... We had a conversation. It wasn't heated, but he, he acted like he was going to revoke my Nigeria man credentials. Listen. Causing my 13-year-old son, who was in the car with me, to be very distraught. He said, Dad, you have to stay a Nigeria man. Um, but talking about children, when I was a little boy, mm -hmm. when I was seven years old, growing up in the middle of nowhere, Florida, in a swamp, closest town was 30 miles away. Mm -hmm. The first thing that happened in the world that brought to bear to me that maybe things weren't always right, maybe yes. things weren't always good, wasn't the Vietnam War. Vietnam War. I was in the South. It was correct and just, and we were the warriors. Mm -hmm. It was the Biafra War. Biafra. Listen. I remember very distinctly thinking, this just isn't right. This isn't right. The British. This is a great right now. People. It is a great nation. It's a great nation. Biafra. A country. And then later when I learned, something most people don't know, mm -hmm. that there is a plausible argument that democracy began in Igbo land. Igbo land, a white man, democracy, the world knows today started in Igbo land, the, the whole world over. A white man, an American, an American doing his research. 
I don't know who has this clip. I want to post it on my page. Democracy started where in Igbo land. Now, do you see the reason why I tell that we are the most, the oldest people on this earth? And if you don't have the grace of God, you cannot write. You cannot read and write. A white man doing research in America. This is what this is why CNN will not carry our news. If you're wondering why BBC won't carry, this is it. Because the white man understands what Biafra means. Blacks in Africa don't know. They don't know the purpose of God in their lives. They have no idea. You see, the Yoruba see Biafra as um, something there to be fought. Let's fight it. They are fighting Biafra out of ignorance. This man did his research and said what our ancestors were able to do 5,000 years ago. Now, today, we cannot do it. The first written constitution in the whole world, Igbo land. The first organized government in the world, Igbo land. The first, the only, there are two people that God controlled from heaven. The Israelites and those that he sent to Biafra land. Only two. The Israelites revolt, revolted and said, give us a king so we can be like other nations. And Chukwu Kabyama gave them Saul. Do you know the funniest thing? The Igbo race never asked for a king. Instead, they named their children Chibu as a goddess king. That is why if you come out in, in Biafra land in those days, I say Igbo land as an example because they're the ones maintaining it. And you say to somebody, you're a king. They'll tell you to go and be a king to your wife and your children. Now you understand how special we are. Now you understand why I fight for Biafra to be free. And I want my Yoruba brethren to understand, once Biafra is free, you're also very free. You'll be very rich, I assure you. Because it's a blessing from God in heaven, not man. And this is what the British never wanted you to know. They don't want you to know this, never. Because they, they want us to be saying it. And being a black man from Africa, if you're saying it, people won't believe you. The British saw this. That was why they said we must amalgamate them. They found Anam Diaziki, when Anam Diaziki was a willing tool of the devil. And he agreed. Mazen Bono Jike warned him, he said no. I'll play it again so you hear how special you are. I want you to understand how special... Some of you don't know why we fight for Biafra. This is the reason why. We are the oldest of the oldest, the very ancient people. When I tell you that Igbo language is world that speak in heaven, you're doubting me. That is what they speak in heaven. The angels address God Almighty in Igbo language. This is the reason why the oldest civilization on this earth Land, the center of the whole world. Let's listen to this man once again. I'm I'm excited about it. Right. Listen. This is a great people. Great, this is a great nation. Great nation. There was a country. That was a country. And then later when I learned something most people don't know. Most people don't know this. There is a plausible argument that mm -hmm. democracy began in Igbo land. Democracy. The very first written constitution on this planet was written by the Igbo people. The Igbo people wrote the first constitution, but Europeans don't want the world to know. Because they are wondering, if that is the case, why did God put people in Africa? That's so backwards. And I'm saying to them, God sent us to Africa to bring light into Africa. That's our job. In here, Chineke, in our villages, in here, which means light, is an number, is everywhere you go to. Do you not see who we are? <laughs> the first written constitution in CBD, the first. 
Let's listen. I want to listen to this man more, please. Let's listen to him. The very first democracy that involves self-governance. Self-governance. For everybody. Autonomous community. Not just the Greek wealthy, but everybody was in Igbo land. Igbo land. And the very first democracy that permitted women leaders. The first, the, the, the anywhere when America was saying give women a vote, this is our mothers, our mothers, so we are rulers. They rule the families. When women are talking in our culture, men don't come out. They, you, don't, you, you don't dare come out. Can you see it? Can you hear who we are? When I hear all these fools in Abuja and in Lagos, all these riffraffs talking rubbish, I feel sorry for them. That is why we are harsh with any idiot that calls himself an elder who doesn't know history. What we are fighting for is to protect something that anybody will be envious of. This is who we are. And we started worshipping idol. Somebody will go to the farm and cut a wood. Oh, Pierre will say, you cut an idol. Rubbish. You bow down before an idol. And God took away all the blessing he gave us. He said, go and worship idol. And that's what you want. That's why we're in a mess. God gave us 700 years to come out of it. We continued in idol worship. And he sent the British. The Arabs came. He said, no, I don't want you to do it. He sent the British instead. Go and conquer them. And as you're conquering them, you're going with the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. If they are smart, God said, if they are smart, they will go to Old Testament and see who they are. And that was what we did. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's listen. Was in Igbo land. Igbo land. The West, Europe, we were still in the Dark Ages. Europe was nothing. You see all these white men building aeroplane and going to the moon. They were nothing. When Biafra land was bubbling, when the kingdom of Biafra was at its peak with God Almighty in heaven as the under king, Europe was nowhere. They were in the Stone Ages. They were nothing. Oh dear me. And yet the Igbo had figured out a way to have a just and meaningful government and a just and meaningful society and due process and fairness. And to this day, you see a great... Listen, due process and fairness. These things are weaved into our idioms we have, our proverbs. This is a white man teaching you who you are. Fairness. Which is the foundation of our constitution. Fairness. I want the world to hear this. Biafra means fairness. You can never cheat anybody and get away with it. Never. In Biafra land. Oh God in heaven. Mm. Some idiots come up and they say they're elders. They know nothing. They are promoting one Nigeria. Bringing the curse of God upon them. And on their children. They know nothing. God said you cannot go into Nigeria. You're not a Nigerian. I asked the British to come to show you who you are. That you may return to me. That I may reestablish my kingdom. Before I raised such and I found it, I used to tell you that Biafra is the kingdom of heaven on this earth. I told you that before. Before I did raise such and I discovered it. And I've shown it to you. I showed it, it's on my page. Go to me, scroll down, you will see it. Kingdom of Biafra is there written. Which means that the name couldn't have come from anywhere else. Apart from the people that they gave it to. A white man is now telling you who you are. The first organized system of government in the whole world. With fairness. Weaved into with fairness. Fairness. That's who we 